The average return on the stock market over a 100-year period is about 10%, and I'm going to show you how to beat that with three basic, simple strategies. So like I said, 9.9% .9 is your average historical return on the S&P 500 over a 100-year time period. Now, how can you beat that? Well, I can tell you it's not with a financial manager. I can tell you it's not investing in mutual funds. I can tell you it's not investing in these high-cost ETFs, not low-cost ETFs, high-cost ETFs. I'm going to show you what I do to do this. Of course, I have my value strategy. I have a method that I use very similar to the little book that beats the market. And it's basically building my own ETF based on value parameters. And this alone does beat the market over a long period of time. It does a lot better in bad times in the stock market than it does in good times because I'm not because lo I'm looking for companies that are of value and have potential to continue to grow based on the current environments of the time. The second one, options. Options is something that I can generate probably an extra four to five percent on top of this number that I, I produce for my value portfolio that can really give me the edge. And this is something that is really starting to pick up in our community. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit more where these options come from. So imagine getting from this value strategy, any 11, 12, 13%. And then adding an additional 4 to 5%. Guys, if you compound that additional 4 to 5% on top of that, that alone is going to absolutely crush anything that you're going to get from a low-cost ETF. And the last way for me is trading. And this is something that a lot of people in the Everything at Money community are utilizing. It's trading. And I'm going to just briefly show you my very simple process. And I'm not saying that you're going to get anywhere 40% returns here. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. I'm looking for something in the 12 to 20% range, probably end up somewhere in the 15 to 16% range year over year. Now, this 40%, if you're looking for 40% on trading, it's not for me. I've always said trading has one of the most negative connotations in the English language because of the way it's used in the media, because of the way it's used on YouTube, et cetera. It just doesn't make sense the way that people talk about it. So let's get into the value strategy. Of course, if you've watched this, this channel for any length of time, we look at companies that have different metrics. You can pull it up right here on our eight pillar software. These are just basic things that we look for. Five-year PE, uh, shares outstanding decreasing, very little debt or debt, or if it is high debt, where is the debt going? What are they using it for? Are they using it for lease obligations, et cetera? Cash flow. This is the lifeblood to any company. If you don't have cash flow, you don't have a lot going on for you. Growth, revenue growth. People say we don't know, understand growth. Revenue growth is a big one for us. Return on capital. How are the companies investing back in themselves? How is the capital allocation going? These, this is one way, and we have thousands of videos where both Paul and I explain exactly what we're talking about, what we're looking for in these companies. The next way, options, and this is the one that I really wanted to hit on here. If I'm looking at Apple, let's say that Apple is sitting at $170 a share right now. And let's, you know what? Let's say that it's sitting at $170, and let's say that I own Apple shares, okay? Because I'm going to I want to show you covered calls, and then I want to show you puts. So let's say that you own Apple shares at $170. So there's ways for you to make premium on top of the 170 and below the 170 if you want to add more shares. Now today, let's say that by the end of two Fridays from now, so, so by the 26th, let's say that you want to sell Apple shares at $180 or maybe you don't want to sell them. There's ways that you can do this. You would go sell an option. And guys, we have made so many videos about this. We have about 1,600 videos that we've made on this channel. They range from value to options to trading to different topical conversations. The options ones are really great for you. And I'm going to go a little bit in the detail here, but if you want even more detail, you can go and watch different videos on it. Let's say that you want to sell your shares at $180. You're going to go in and you're going to write what's called a covered call. And the reason it's covered is because you own the shares and you're trying to get rid of it. So the, here's, the, here's the situation. If Apple on Friday, the 26th of August, ends up anywhere above $180 and zero cents, anywhere above that, so $180 and one cent or above, you are going to get your shares of Apple taken away from you at 170. Now, what do you get for that? Well, you get what is called the premium. So when you write this option right here for $180, maybe you're gonna get $1.50 per share. So let's say you have 100 shares of this. You're gonna get $150 just to write that option and make that agreement with the market. That is a way for you to collect a little bit more premium on top of selling here. And that actually takes your cost basis for selling this to $181.50 because you collected that little extra bit of premium. Now, if for example, this thing ends up at 
on Friday, April 26th, let's say 179.80. Keep your shares. You keep your shares and you keep that additional $1.50. That is a way that you, you kept your shares. The stock price climbed up to $179.80 from 170 and you kept that $1.50 extra in premium. Now, let's say that you want to buy more shares of Apple by that same date. Let's say that it's sitting at 170 and you want to buy shares on 826 for, let's call it, let's say $160, okay? You want to own those shares. You're going to write what is called a put. And I typically like to use and suggest that you use cash secured puts, meaning that you have the cash in your account to buy those shares if it hits. So if Apple stock finishes anywhere below $160.00, so if it finishes at $159.20, let's say you collected $1.50 for it, $1.50 in premium, so there's your premium, so you're still getting that premium, you are going to have to buy 100 shares, or whatever the contract is, one contract equals 100 shares, you're going to have to buy 100 shares at $159.20. So you have to have the cash to execute those, those shares. Now, what happened? Well, you got the stock at a lot lower price than you than, than 170 instead of just buying shares, but you also collected premium right there. So instead of you being in it at 159, uh, 159.20, it actually, it actually helped you out a little bit because you got that little difference in there of $1.50. So it actually brings down your cost basis. So this is just a way that you can maximize those returns. These, this number can be calculated and you can figure out what your annualized return is. Not only is it going to increase your returns over a long period of time, it can make a massive, massive difference. And this is where I personally and Paul, we both get about this four to 5%. And depending on your approach to this, depending on the, the risk that you want to take of getting your shares taken away or getting assigned to you, you can truly increase this number a great deal. Now, the last thing that I use is trading, but I don't, tip, I don't do it in the way that you see most people on YouTube doing it, or you see pe most people on television doing it. I don't go at this saying, hey, I'm going to buy Apple here at 128 and I'm going to end up selling it at 172 and there's 100% chance that I make all of this money coming up. No, it's a much more conservative approach. I am looking at what's called the trend. And this is the stochastic. So you can call this the stochastic or the trend. If I ever say the trend is your friend, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're not getting in at the lowest low. You're not exiting at the highest high. But what you're doing is getting into a stock. And the idea behind my trading method is to increase the probability that you will make money. And if you're going to lose money, going to lessen the loss that you have. So let's look at Apple right here and give you a quick example. And I'm going to go from it from a long term perspective. And I'm going long term because I intend that, you, that I'm intending that I can hold this for multiple weeks. So let's say you saw Apple bottomed out right here. Well, I would have missed a lot of this. I would not have been buying until right about here, right about there. So all of this run from about $128 to $150, that wasn't for me. You might call me crazy. There's different methods that you can go at, at, at approaching this. But for me, this is not what I was waiting for. I was waiting for my red and yellow line to get into this area called the sweet spot. This is the sweet spot, and this gives me the highest probability to, that, that my trend is going to continue forward. And you can see, when I entered here, probably 155, 156, I'm still in the stock. The stock, it's at 172 right now. And the probability right now is that it's going to continue to go higher. Why? Because my trend is just going higher and higher, and I don't have a lot of resistance points to go at. So with all that being said, I know a lot of that can be confusing. We simplify it here on the channel. We simplify the value. You can go watch one of the 1,600 videos that we've made. We simplify the options. We break it down. This video may not have seemed that way, but we truly break it down easier than anybody else on the internet to sell options the way that we do. And of course, trading, tons of people in the bid and ask nation are making thousands of dollars doing this. So guys, my favorite way out of these three to make money and increase my returns is options. If you want more information on this and how you can increase your returns, go watch this video right here with Paul and I'll catch you on the flipping flop. <laughs>